but American history was made uh, last night when Amy Coney Barrett was sworn in as our newest Supreme Court justice. And even though she didn't get a single vote from the Democrats, she pledges to be a judge for all Americans. Take a look. A judge declares independence not only from Congress and the president, but also from the private beliefs that might otherwise move her. The judicial oath captures the essence of the judicial duty. The rule of law must always control. My fellow Americans, even though we judges don't face elections, we still work for you. Well, so, uh, that sounded good. I think it, it made a point. You know, I always believe that justices, when they become Supreme Court justices, have to, you know, they change somehow, like Anthony Kennedy did. He went from being a very right-wing guy and, you know, seemed to be judging about the law. So how do you feel when you look at this and you hear this? How do you feel about how it all went down, Sarah? Well, the whole process felt rushed, and, and for my personal beliefs, it was inappropriate to push this through. But even the pictures of the swearing in, this happened hours after she was confirmed. She took the oath, and it was dark out, and it felt secretive and, and just strange. And like you said, this is the first time in 151 years that she didn't receive one single vote from the minority party. And so it kind of spoke to how divided we are. So there was a bit of heavy heartedness as I watched this. And it made me sad because swearing in a Supreme Court justice should be a great moment for our country. And also, you know, for her as an individual, I, you know, if it wasn't her, it would have been someone else. So I don't blame her personally. But what a heavy burden right. to bear on such a momentous moment. And um, I think that it just, it kind of spoke to how divided we are. Everyone raced to their corners of their party. It was party over people, I feel like, in this instance. And the only person that gave wow. me hope was Senator Susan Collins, who was the one Republican dissenting vote. And, you know, she said something that resonated with me. She said, uh, you know, uh, what I have concentrated on is being fair and consistent, and I do not think it is fair nor consistent to have a Senate confirmation vote prior to the election. And, but that was only one person. So that was kind of where I had to rest right. my hope. So, Sonny, what, when you, you heard all of that, what was your impression? Because, you know, of course, he put her in three years ago so that she, he could confirm her, you know, the next, in, a, in a couple of years. So do you, how do you feel about it? Do you feel like she's ready for this, or is this something that, you know, you should get thrown into? Well, look, she's a constitutional law scholar. I don't know that uh, anyone is questioning her legal chops. I mean, she has only been a judge for, you know, uh, three years. She was um, put on the circuit court, I believe, in 2017. She's never tried a case before. She's never argued in front of the Supreme Court. So that kind of experience is lacking. But she's certainly a, a brilliant constitutional law scholar. That being said, um, it was really odd that she even sort of participated in the pomp and circumstance that we saw yesterday. She didn't owe President Trump anything. Um, she didn't have to be at the on the White House grounds, especially after the super spreader event um, of her appointment uh, at the Rose Garden. And so I thought that was poor form. I thought it showed um, a tremendous lack of judgment. And I think that her appointment is really going to change. Um, uh, the way the Supreme Court um, is going not only to handle um, cases, but the way the Supreme Court is going to look going forward. Because we all know that the Republican Party has been packing the Supreme Court for decades. They've been uh, packing the judiciary for decades. Trump has put now three justices on the Supreme Court and just dozens and dozens of judges uh, on the federal judiciary. So I think what we're going to see yeah. is perhaps the Democrats unpacking the Supreme Court so that there is more of a balance. Because right now, the Supreme right. Court does not reflect uh, the values of America. The Supreme Court now reflects the minority of the values of America. And that is important because it's supposed to really reflect what is a balance of American values with a swing justice right. deciding sort of what what the law is and right. that is not what we are seeing now so this is going to lead i think to right. an unpacking of, of the court which may lead to right. 13 justices um which would reflect the the federal appeals courts right. around the country right 
or some impeachments, which is possible with Supreme Court judges, they also can be impeached. Barry, when you look at this, did you think, boy, this is a little quick, or did you think, I'm not sure she she's the person, or were you comfortable that she might be the person? We don't know. Well, I'm confused about what Sonny's saying about packing and unpacking the court. Packing the court is about adding more justices to the bench, which is something that people like AOC and Ilhan Omar are advocating for. Packing the court doesn't mean appointing justices that some people don't like. I think that's really where the debate is. Everyone knew that Amy Coney Barrett had the votes to get through. You can be angry at the Republicans for their hypocrisy with Merrick Garland versus Amy Coney Barrett. But I think where the conversation is right now is about whether or not the Democrats, if they win uh, the Senate and if Joe Biden wins, if they're going to fundamentally change the nature of the court, as Roosevelt once tried to do. And I think it's really interesting that, you know, there's tons of discussion about Ruth Bader Ginsburg mourning her death, um, the anger that a lot of liberals and Democrats feel of Republicans not honoring her last wish. But in 2019, Ruth Bader Ginsburg was asked by Nina Totenberg in NPR if she believed in court packing, which was already sort of in the ether at that point, and she opposed it. She said nine is a very good number. I think one thing that a lot of centrists and moderates are looking for right now is whether Joe Biden will have the strength to stand up to the left-wing flank of his party. The fact that he has refused on the record to say whether or not he will pack the court, I think, is, is very suspicious to some people. And the fact that journalists aren't forcing him to ask that essential question that he's saying, I'll only answer it after I win, is pretty ridiculous as far as I'm yes. concerned. Well, here's what I think. Can I, can I mean, I when Sonny Barry is talking about, wait, let me, yeah, hold, hold on one second. Let me, because I, I think when Sonny was talking about packing the courts, I think she was talking about the fact that the lower courts have been packed. I don't think she was talking about uh, but, the Supreme Court. That's what, that's okay. what I took I from you, Sonny. Am I wrong? Court. You were talking about the yes, Supreme Court. Yes, you're wrong. So you're talking I, about... I was, I was okay, in particular talking about the Supreme Court being packed, and I used those words very specifically um, because if you look at uh, an article in Newsweek written by a very good friend of mine and a legal scholar, Tom Rogers, and it's entitled Unpacking the Supreme Court, and that is because, again, Republicans have been packing not only the federal judiciary, they have been packing the Supreme Court by design. That has been the Republican plan. And in order to unpack the Supreme Court, meaning unpack the culture, unpack the values that are on the Supreme Court, in order to do that, you would have to add uh, either term limits, age limits, or you would have to add justices, which would then balance the Supreme Court, which would lead to an unpacking. So I use those, that term uh, very specifically because I was referring to Tom Rogers' um, uh, I understand. Uh, article I understand. in Newsweek, which has been I, discussed very much it, so. But also, Barry, to your other point about Joe Biden, he has answered that question and he has said that he is going to twice. put together a coalition, a bipartisan coalition, that's, to study that's not a, uh, that's the not issue answering of, the, of the Supreme Court. That's not answering the question. I think it is a good Amy answer Cone because he's, he's, what he's doing it's not, is he's it's answering a dodge. the Wait, question oh. in a bipartisan way because he's leading to, he, he wants this, this uh, country not to be as divided. At, as it has been. He wants to bring the country together, and a way to do that is to study the issue and, uh, and study the issue in a bipartisan way. I think that's the best answer um, that anyone has really provided S for study, this issue. Studying the issue is great. When a presidential nominee uh, says that he is unwilling to answer the question that, you know, the minute after Amy Coney Barrett was confirmed last night, you had all of the most, in my view, where the energy is in the Democratic Party, Ilhan Omar, AOC, I think Ayanna Presley were tweeting about packing the court. That's a live and relevant issue. And for the Democratic nominee to not answer it, I believe it's a dodge to talk about appointing a commission. That may be all well and good, but he should have Again, a straight he, answer I, to that, just like RBG I did. Will point out, I will point out that he actually did answer this issue twice. And the fact that AOC and those young ladies and all of those folks, you know, they don't speak for the whole party. And Agreed. really, there are lots of ways to 
shift this. You know, one could impeach judges that have not stuck to the rules of being judges uh, on the Supreme Court. That's been done several times. So there's a lot of ways to balance stuff out. And I'm quite happy he didn't answer. And I'm going to tell you why. And then we're going to go to break. I'm glad he didn't answer because, frankly, he doesn't have to. You know, I, we ask a lot of questions, we want answers, but we don't always get them. And now, I don't think we're going to get them the way we want them now. So, you, you know, you this, is, this is going to go up to the, to the bottom of it. You don't think the American people so, entitled to an answer about that? I think they will get an answer when he's ready to give one, when he has the information that he's comfortable sharing. And no, I don't think that the American people are used now to getting answers to the questions that they ask because we've had an administration that doesn't ever answer a question.